So right here we have a great plant called Sweet Sisley. This is it here. It's rather late in the season. It's pretty much already going to seed. Sweet Sisley is a member of the carrot family. These are its flower umbels. If you can see, they're uh, very tender and faint, but it's got very, very sparse, fine, elongated white flowers. The seeds are really well known for their ability to, to cling and pierce clothing. They have two little claws on the front of them. They're so small, they're extremely thin and elongated. So you can see they're uh, quite sparse. That's one thing about this plant is it doesn't have a dense, compact uh, flower umbel like many other uh, members of the carrot family. The uh, front leaf, the front most one here, it goes in this fashion where it's uh, spearheaded shaped and then it goes in and branches off with two at the base of it. And that always seems to be in every one of these plants. The underside of them is hairy and white colored. Upon observation, we can note the uh, very dark, well-pronounced veins running up the center of the leaves. And uh, from what I can see here, they're uh, two times divided. So we have the main stem here, which is hairy. It's hairy and dull, and it's got a very uh, rough, kind of dry, velvety-like texture. Here's an almost, uh, this is a characteristic and indicative of the carrot family, as we can see in fennel, hemlock, many other types of plants, where it divides up, and then they're twice divided. We got once divided and twice divided. The leaves can really be noted for uh, appearing where the main stem divides and no leaves are to be found up the uh, main bulk of the stem but rather right where the stem divides, divides into two uh, more stems. You have to exercise a bit of caution. As we've talked about previously, this plant can be uh, mistaken for white or red baneberry. But the dead giveaway of this plant is its licorice -y, uh, sweet odor and taste. This is uh, basically a very, very close relative of wild fennel or anise, but this is not fennel, this is uh, sweet sisley. The most desirable part of this plant is going to be the roots. The roots are uh, very bulbous and uh, they're almost like a sweet potato in shape, but they're much smaller than that. That's where most of the flavor and concentration of medicinal food and properties is going to be in this plant. But uh, for the purposes of this plant, I'm not going to harvest it for this video. And the reason being is they're extremely uh, sparse and scarce. And I don't want to disrupt them because they could very likely kill the whole patch of them off if I take this one plant. I'm actually uh, considering maybe harvesting a few of the seeds and see if I can uh, plant them, keep them going. This is the only spot in the whole area I've actually found any of these. But when I did spot it, I knew right off the bat. So sweet sisley can be harvested for its leaves or stems. Uh, I've heard of people using the flower, perhaps maybe even the seeds, grinding them up. But the uh, tuberous roots are going to be the best part of this plant, and that's where they're going to have the strongest flavor and taste. Believe it or not, there's actually three subspecies of this plant here in Canada and the United States. But um, I'd have a very difficult time telling them apart because the characteristics are so close. I'd probably have to consult a botanist and get the advice of a professional before I could make that determination. But there's no fear telling them apart from being sweet sisley because they're, uh, they all share these characteristics. This is a fairly stout plant. It only gets about 90 centimeters tall. It's got stout uh, fern-like leaves. They're usually one and a half to nine centimeters long. And uh, again, it's a very short plant like the baneberry and they share many characteristics, but you're not gonna confuse them if you uh, note the smell and the fact that these leaves are more fern-like and the uh, baneberry's leaves are much more maple leaf-like. 
As you can see, this is uh, basically lobed into three sections, but the middle uh, leaf is much more spear shaped, and the side leaves are uh, very spear headed shaped as well, containing a random assortment of lobes. The overall look of the leaf is that of a fern quality, so if you uh, rule out that maple leaf look, you should have no problem telling these two plants apart. So here's an overhead view of this plant. It's quite easy to tell uh, relative to all the plants around it. It uh, almost stands out. This plant tends to like a lot of uh, very watery, moist, uh, shaded areas. Doesn't like full sun. And uh, it's very selective about where it grows because uh, I haven't seen this plant in a great abundance and it uh, is quite picky about where it'll grow. I find the same with the baneberry plant. It's only going to grow in very specific conditions and it's a uh, pretty much a shade plant as well. It's not going to do well with uh, competitive plants that will choke it out. So it's often isolated and when you see these two plants they're usually in very very small patches, quite isolated. They're not in huge abundance. So what I have here is a very toxic plant called baneberries. Most of us have seen these and uh, we often refer to them as doll's eyes. Mainly because they uh, grow a bract of uh, either red or white berries that have a black spot on the end of them. Hence why they look like doll's eyes. This is where most of us learn to avoid berries that uh, grow in clusters. This is one plant you can usually see and know better not to eat the berries, I'll tell you that right now. The odds of poisonings off this plant are in fact actually pretty low though. When I was a kid I uh, tasted one and it wasn't very smart but I did. And I can remember just how bad these berries tasted, they were extremely bitter. So the odds of a poisoning are quite low because of that fact. Usually if you uh, eat one you'll uh, spit it out before you swallow it and you won't eat a second one. If you did, you're probably pretty foolish. So, this is the leaf of the baneberry plant. Looks very much like a uh, rounded off maple leaf. So nine out of 10 times when this plant starts to grow and mature, it'll be four times palmately compound. Palmately meaning leaves not feather shaped, more like the palm of your hand. Four times meaning they split off four times before they hit the actual leaf and compound meaning many parts. So here's the bottom of this plant, here's the main stem. We got one, two, three, and finally four. We got palmate leaves that are compound. So four times palmately compound. This plant from what I've seen is quite short. I've never seen this plant more than three feet tall. Most of them around here are uh, quite small. You can get an idea. There's my hand. It's probably only about six to eight inches tall. This is a matured plant because right at the top of these plants they have a uh, bract of berries where the berries grow. That grows off the uh, final leaf here. So there's a center bract almost like a finger sticking out and then all around this bract is where these berries grow. This by the way was red bane berry. I can tell that because the uh, bract where the berries are is quite squat and stout. A white baneberry plant is usually easily distinguishable because this uh, here is much longer. It's not that skinny, it's usually quite uh, thick and it's red, usually a bright red. So the white bane berries can often, because of the weight of all those berries growing, because this is quite long, it's usually found wilted over like that. This 
So this was a red bean berry. That being said, this plant can cross pollinate and a botanist can tell you this is a red bean berry and it may grow white bean berries. The odds are low, but that can happen. Both these plants are incredibly toxic. Anywhere from one to three berries can cause severe gastrointestinal upset, vomiting and nausea and convulsions. I've heard of anywhere from three to six berries causing fatal poisonings. The known toxic substance in these uh, plants is called ranunculin, which is uh, basically the same thing in buttercups. It's most highly concentrated in the berries and the roots, although it is throughout the entire plant. And the stems and leaves can cause uh, skin contact dermatitis as well as blistering. So here's a view over this white plastic bag so you can better see what's going on here with this plant. Here's the uh, bract of where the berries used to be. Unfortunately, I wasn't quick enough to the draw to be able to get the berries. It's already gone to seed and they're all done so I won't be able to show you the berries of it but I will in a picture. Here's a better view of this leaf. Very coarse toothed uh, rounded bottom maple leaf. Look in here. The smaller leaves uh, that are starting to develop usually don't grow into this right away. When they mature they'll finally end up looking like this. They're usually lobed three times like here one, two, and three, and then uh, they're very coarsely toothed all the way throughout. They have very uh, strong looking veins, as you can see in the bottom here. And the veins are very random. They go all the way out to the tip of the loaves. Here's a better bulk of this plant here. They usually divide two to three times. This plant is uh, very mature, it's divided four times. They usually divide up right from the very bottom of the stem where it comes out of the ground. So it's quite low in the respect that way. So this here is the root of the Bainberry plant. It's uh, quite large. It's got a lot of meat to it. It seems to be across from a tap root followed by some fibrous uh, roots sticking out of it. And uh, one of the things I'll point out to you right now is this plant may be confused for sweet Sicily. But as soon as you crush the leaves up and smell, you're not going to get that licorice uh, fennel and yeast type smell off of this plant. So that'll tell you right there that it's not uh, sweet Sicily. That is something to be cognizant of because uh, it's not only the berries that are a threat, the uh, root is also extremely toxic. And there's probably enough poison in this root to uh, put you in the hospital. So just be aware of that. Once you study the two plants up close, You'll be able to tell upon sight that it's not sweet Sicily, but an amateur may be uh, fooled. Quite often when we're starting out, and I had this myself, quite often as human beings, we see what we want to see and not what's actually there. So it's very important to get your facts straight.